All right, 3.2. Um, so they're going to give you this little intro question about entering um, interval notation answers. You actually know how to do that already. We did that in the last section. So um, let's, let's just jump down to the question. Here it is. They're saying, put this in. So can you see it? I'll bring it out a little bigger here. It's saying this right here or... So I made that kind of big. Okay, so this or that. So how would you put that in as an interval? They're just giving you some interval stuff. Remember how this works to put this in? Let's do this one first. How do we put that one as an interval? Do we start with a 2 and go to the 5, right? Does the 2 get a parenthesis or a bracket? Parenthesis. Parenthesis, and the 5 gets a bracket because he's got the bar, huh? Mm -hmm. And what do you do with the or? Yeah, that's the U. See how the OR is the U? The U. And now what do you do with greater than 7? Is that going to go negative infinity or positive infinity? Greater? Positive. Greater stuff goes to positive infinity, huh? So it's going to go parenthesis, right? Because there's no bar there. 7 to infinity. So you know about that all already, right? That's not really new for you. On to 3, 2. Here's what's new. And it's actually not hard. Domain. So they're going to ask us these, what might seem like a weird question, domain. Like, what do you mean domain? What's domain? Here's what domain is. It's allowable x values. The x values you're allowed to plug into the function. Now, right away, that begs the question, what do you mean? Are some x values not allowed? Yeah. So, for example, let's talk about a toaster. That's always my favorite analogy for a function. Um, my, my kids always kid me whenever if they ever talk about my teaching. I say, yeah, dad just goes to college and talks about functions all day long. And toaster, <laughs> talks about toasters all day long. But toaster is a great analogy for a function. Well, there are certain things you can't put in a toaster, right? You shouldn't put knives in a toaster. Mm -hmm. Microwave oven's a toaster. I didn't toaster. Microwave oven's a function. You shouldn't put tinfoil in the microwave oven. So those would not be in the domain. Domain is allowable plugins. There's certain things you should put into a toaster or a microwave oven. There's certain things you shouldn't. That's what we're talking about with these functions. There's certain things it's okay to plug in, certain things it's not. Now, now what, what, why? What would not be okay? Here's the X. Here's the function we're talking about. And there's, his, there's his, the holes in the toaster right there, right? The insert slot. What can't you put in there? Well, do you remember you can't make the bottom of a fraction zero? That's a big no-no. Dividing by zero is an error. You try to calculate or take any number, seven divided by zero or whatever, it'll give you error. So you can't because it's infinity, really. Zero goes in, you know, if zero's in the bottom, it goes in there infinite times. So you cannot make the bottom zero. So whenever you've got a fraction, you say denominator not equal to zero. So you set the denominator not equal to zero. That's, that's how you do the domain. So you just grab this right here. And we say, okay, the denominator, I don't care about the top. I'm not doing anything with that four. Don't care about him at all. I'm just saying denominator, x minus five, you cannot equal zero. The bottom is not allowed to be zero because if the bottom's zero, that's infinity. So then you just solve that not equals equation just like you would an equals equation. How do you get x alone there? X is saying, I won't be alone. So add the 5, huh? Add the 5 to both sides. Gonzo. So then x not equal to 5. There it is. So what we're saying is x can't be 5. You can plug anything else in all the world in there you want to plug in, but don't plug in 5. Why not? Because if you put a 5 in, you can see it, huh? If you put a 5 right in there for x, you're going to get 5 minus 5 in the bottom, 0, and the bottom of the fraction will be 0. That's a big no-no. You guys have your calculators? Take them out for a second. Take 7, even if you just have a cell phone, take 7 divided by 0, or 3, pick whatever number you want. Go divide by 0. And what's it telling you? You know why that is, right? Like, think about division. If I go 10 divided by 2, what's the answer? 5. And that's because 2 goes into 10 5 times. Well, what if we try that with 0? How many times does 0 go into 10? Goes in forever, doesn't it? It's infinity, actually, but we just say it's not a number. It, zero goes in and in and in and in and in forever. Never stops, right? That's why we don't want zero on the bottom, because it's an infinite. 
That's what it is. All right, so let's come back to, um, let's try that on number three. Same thing on number three. We're going to grab this. It's a denominator, and we're going to say denominator, you're not equal to zero. Denominator not equal to zero, right? And then just solve for x there. So what's x going to be not equal to? x cannot be 7. But notice we also have an x on the top this time. And we have a square root. Now, that's the other big no-no. We've got two no-nos. One of them is denominators can't be 0 because that's in infinity. And the other one is, remember what you cannot have inside of a square root? Anybody remember that? What's, what's the square root of 9? 3. And what if a young child asked you why? What if your young brother or sister or nephew or niece? Why is the square root of 9, 3? What would you say? Don't bother me, kid. Just do what I say. No. <laughs> square root of 9 is 3 because why? 3 times 3 is 9. Exactly. Square roots just say, what times are right? 3 times 3 is 9. Well, by that same thought, let me ask you, what's the square root of negative 9? Yeah, you see, you can't do it, right? Have we talked? I can't remember. Have we talked about some of this? Okay, we have. Okay, I'll quit repeating myself then. Yeah, you can't have negative. It's going to be imaginary, isn't it? Right? Because nothing times itself is negative. No, you can't have negative in a root, right? It's, just, it's imaginary. It's not real. So we don't want I right now. We, we only want real stuff right now. At other times, they'll say, give me an I answer, and they'll let us know when they want that. But otherwise, we don't want imaginary answers. So, okay, so that means when you take this top, this square root of x plus 7, basically for a root, for roots, the inside of the root has to not be negative. Wouldn't you agree? We can't have a negative inside of a root. Well, that's weird. How do you say not negative? The inside not negative, what's, what's not, if something's not negative, what is it? It's greater than or equal to zero, isn't it? If it's not negative, then it's zero or bigger. Zero or positive, huh? So what we're saying is, you grab the inside, and you say, hey, inside, just the inside, you've got to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't be negative. You've got to be zero or bigger. Greater than or equal to zero. Zero or positive. And then we solve that for x. So let's solve that for x. Subtract 7. Gonzo. So x is greater than or equal to negative 7. So we have two conditions here. Do you see them? Two conditions. For denominators, they can't be equal to 0, which means x cannot be positive 7, because that would make the bottom 7. And the other no-no is the inside of a root has to be greater than or equal to 0. It can't be negative, because that would be imaginary. So we say inside, you've got to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 7. Because if it's negative 7, that would be 0. That's okay. It's okay to have 0 in a root. That's just 0. Square root of 0 is just 0. No problem. It's okay to have 0 on the top of a fraction. It's the bottom that would wreck it. 0 on the top of a fraction just means the whole thing is 0. That's fine. But 0 on the bottom is infinity. Can't have that. So 0 on the top is fine. So negative 7 is fine. And anything bigger than negative 7, but like negative 8 would be no good, huh? You put in negative 8 up there in the top, that'd make that inside of that top negative, wouldn't it? That's why we're saying it has to be negative 7 or bigger, bigger than or equal to negative 7. So how do we put those two things together? We're saying you got to have a number that's bigger than or equal to negative 7, negative 7 or bigger, and it can't be positive 7. It's this right here. Do you see they're putting that together? Let me go on the number line to help with that. I bet it'll make more sense if I go on the number line. So on the number line, if I say, okay, show me all the numbers that are negative 7 or bigger. Well, that'd be way back here, negative 7, right? Or bigger. But you can't be positive 7, please. So I go, oh, okay. So right at positive 7, there'd have to be a hole, wouldn't there? See how I'm putting those two things together? I'm taking all the numbers bigger than or equal to negative 7, but I'm putting a hole right at 7, because you can't equal positive 7. 
because that was the denominator condition. So how do you skip positive 7? You can put a hole there, but another way is to put parentheses. Because remember, parentheses don't include the number. You're just around it. So there's the answer. It's all the numbers between negative 7 and positive 7 united with all the numbers from 7 to infinity. Do you see that is actually correct? That says everything negative 7 or bigger skipping positive 7. Um, so yeah. the x not equal to it isn't going to come up a lot. All right, let's move on. So um, how about here, another domain question. So, um, so there's two things we look for. For domain, for domain, there's two things we look for. Number one, does it have any roots, you know, square roots? If so, we say inside, you've got to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't be negative. Secondly, does it have any denominators? If so, we say denominator cannot equal zero. So look at this question. Are there any square roots? No. So we don't have any of those issues. Last problem, we had a square root on the top. We had both things. That was a hard one. Secondly, is there any denominator? Well, yeah, it's a fraction. So, yeah, it's got a denominator. So we say, okay, denominator, you are not allowed to equal zero. Because if the bottom is zero, that's infinity. So now we need to solve that. How do we solve that? Remember solving x squared equations? We did a little bit of that. Remember factoring? How can we factor that? What two numbers multiply to be 27 and add to be plus 6? Yeah, 9 times 3. What signs do we need? Plus 6 in the middle? Remember the sign in the middle goes on the... Bigger number, plus 9 minus 3. And then, remember what we do from there when we have the two parentheses, equal to 0, not equal to 0, same thing? What do we do? If two things are timesing to be 0 or not be 0, same thing. Either one could be 0 to make that happen, right? Yeah. So you say, okay, x plus 9 cannot be 0 or x minus 3 cannot be 0. So x can, oh, and then we solve for each of those. So subtract 9. And on the other one, add 3. Huh? And gonzo, gonzo. And so we have x not equal to negative 9, x not equal to positive 3. So x cannot be negative 9 or positive 3. There it is. x cannot be negative 9, and it cannot be positive 3. All right. So that's all you do. Denominators can't be 0. Let's go on to number 5. Number five is asking us domain from a graph. Now we're going to talk about domain on a picture. How do we do domain on a graph? Let me clear some space here. So domain, domain on a graph is easy. It's the width of the graph. It's left edge, comma, right edge of the graph. So, as you look at the graph, so we're going to look right here. This is going to be the domain. The domain, well, it's on the x-axis. Let me put it on the x-axis. It's on the x-axis. How far left, how far right does the graph go on the x-axis? What do you think? So, how far left does this graph go? Well, negative 2, huh? How far right does the graph go? Positive 6. Now, should I put, they want interval notation, should I put brackets or parentheses at the negative 2 and the positive 6? Does it, does it hit those spots right on? No, it's got the drilled out holes, right? See those open holes on the graph? That means it's been, they drilled it out, right? It doesn't quite touch there and it doesn't quite touch here. That's what a hole on a graph means. It doesn't quite hit there. It, 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 does, it, 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 it does, not, does not hit there, and it does not hit there. So it's going to be what? Parentheses or brackets? Parentheses from negative 2 to 6. It's not brackets because it doesn't hit straight on. So that's the domain. The domain is the width coverage, left edge to right edge, how wide the graph is. 
because that's x values. Remember, domain is x values. That's the x-axis coverage, isn't it? That's the x values. Questions on that one? So let's see what else they get. So number seven, same kind of thing. They say, what is the domain of that one? So can you tell that one by looking at the graph? Remember what domain is? Domain is the left edge, comma, right edge. The width coverage, how far left the graph goes, how far right the graph goes. So what's the answer? Zero, greater than or less than zero. Oh, is it F or? F. Oh, yeah, it's F. They're trying to trick us with that P stuff. Yeah, don't, don't pay attention. F is the x-axis, P is the y. That, that's tricky of them. I'm not going to put that on a test. Yeah, it's, it's the F. They, they put the F, that was, that was weird what they did. All right, anyway, yeah, 0 to 5. What's that? I don't think so. Yes, I did skip number 6. Let's go back to 6. All right, find the domain. You know what, that's the same thing again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip ahead. 6 is the same as the domain. It's a square root domain. So let's skip it. Let's move on. Now they want range. So range. Range, if domain is the sideways coverage of a graph, range is the vertical coverage. Range is vertical span of the graph. In other words, it's bottom comma top. So basically on the y-axis, how low does the graph go? How high does the graph go? That's the range. It's the bottom comma the top of the graph. Like the domain is left edge comma right edge. Range is bottom comma top. So what's the bottom of this graph? What's as low as it goes? If you're a little person walking around back and forth on this graph, What's the lowest you're going to go? <coughs> two, right? And solid two. This one's an open hole, but the one here is totally solid. So right on the two. And what's the highest you're going to go? Five. five. You're going to go from two to five. And you're going to hit those solid. So bracket two, bracket five. You hit the two and the five right on, don't you? You don't just get close to them. It's not parentheses. You go as low as 2, right on, and as high as 5, right on. That's the vertical span, the vertical coverage of that graph. That's called range. All right, so they want domain and range of that one. It's going to be more the same. I'm going to move on to the hardest ones. 10, suppose you are holding your toy submarine, whatever. They want domain and range. Same thing. I'm going to move on. All right, here's where I wanted to get to. So number 11, this is where it's new. So those other ones are domain and range. So on number 11, they're giving us what's called piecewise functions. They do this a lot in pre-calc and calc. This is something they use a lot. It's a piecewise function. So what it means is you use this function for x values less than 0. You use this other function when x values are greater than or equal to 0. So you plug into different functions, different pieces of the function, depending on the x value you're dealing with. This is weird at first, so I wanted to spend 10 minutes talking about it with you. This is weird and hard to get used to at first, but they use it a lot in higher math. Let me, if you, if you, if you, once you get it, it's not bad. What, what this is saying, what this is saying is plug into this piece if x is less than 0. What is less than 0? Negative negative x's. And greater than or equal to 0, that's positive x's, isn't it? Just to put it in common language. It's basically saying, use the top piece. Remember, because we're plugging into a toaster. That's what a function is, right? We're plugging into a toaster. The question is, which slot, which piece? Well, let's come down here. If they give me negative 1, first question, they're asking me f of negative 1. That's a negative number, right? So which piece? Am I going to plug into the top piece or the bottom piece? The top, because negative things, x values less than 0. Plug into the top piece. So you'll plug it in, and you know where it plugs in? The x, right? That's the holes in the toaster. 
So you plug that into the x in the top piece. And you just work it out. What is that? Negative 3 plus 9, 6? So there's that one. Now let's do the second part, f of 0. So if you put 0 into this weird two-piece toaster, are you going to plug it into the top piece or the bottom piece? Bottom. Yeah, do you see how the bottom says greater than or equal? See that bar right there? Greater than or equal to 0. So if you're equal to 0, you plug to the bottom piece. So I'm going to put the 0 right in there, whereas I put the negative 1 right there, didn't I? So yeah, put the 0 in, work it out, plus 18. So what is that? This is 0 plus 18. It's just 18, huh? And finally, third one, f of 2. So we're going to plug f of 2 into this weird two-piece toaster. So top piece or bottom piece, where's the 2 going to go? Bottom. Bottom because it's positive, right? It's greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to plug the 2 in right there. 3 times 2 plus 18, is that 6 plus 18, is that 24? Yeah, so it's all about which piece you plug into depending on your x value. Now, that they're going to they're gonna go <coughs> bigger on that. Is that concept making sense? So that's the concept. You plug in to the uh, appropriate piece. So now they're going to have us look at a graph of a piecewise function. So this is a graph that's in three pieces, isn't it? It's a piecewise graph. So how does it work? Well, what they want here, um, they want us to use interval notation. It's kind of going off the screen there, but you can see an interval notation here, here, and here. They want interval notation. They're saying to us that f of x, f of x is the same as y. So whenever you see a function, just think y. The y height, the height, is 4 if x is in what interval? Well, when is the y height 4? Right here. Right? These guys are all at a height of 4, aren't they? That interval is all at a height of 4. Well, that's, that's in the range, the, the section, of what x values from negative, this is the x-axis, right? From negative, and this is the y. From negative 6 to negative 1, the y values, the f of x, y is the same as f of x, it, it are all 4 between negative 6 and negative 1. So we go bracket, negative 6, negative 1. Because this has got solid dots on both ends. So brackets. So for x values between negative 6 and negative 1, you're at a height of 4. Your f of x is 4. What about the next piece of the puzzle? Next comes negative 4, which is here, huh? What are the x values for that one? Yeah. See it going from negative 1 to positive 3. Now, what about this open dot here? What does that mean? Parenthesis, because you don't quite touch it. It's a drilled out hole. You don't quite make it all the way there. So oh, negative 1, huh? not negative 3. What am I doing? Negative 1 to positive 3. Bracket. And finally, the 5. When are we at a height of 5? In what interval from here to there? 3 to 4, but open dot at the 3. Parenthesis at 3, 4, bracket. Does that make sense? They're going to push us even a little harder. You ready? For this piecewise thing? They're going to say, all right, now do your own graph. This is where it gets hard. And this is hard for pre-calc and calc students. All right, so we got a few minutes. Let's do what we can. We're, we're near the end of the section here. So, all right, so how do you put this together? This will certainly be, how many are we not getting to? Just two others. Okay, we did pretty good. And um, that's just the same thing we just did. And what's 14? And that, oh, that's just domain range. Good, okay, this is it. Do this and we're good. All right, so sketch this graph. So basically, this graph is in three pieces. We're going to have three different pieces. And here's what we're going to do. There, now remember, f of x is y. That's the main thing to remember. f of x is y, is heights. So they're saying y, the height, the y-axis, x-axis, the height is 1 for x values less than or equal to negative 1. 
Can you put that on the graph real quick? Let me give you a second. Even if you don't know, try. So they're saying if x is less than or equal to negative 1, that means here, back, but height of 1. So right, right here, back. There it is. Do you see that? You see how that's at a y height of 1 for x values between negative 1 and forever back. Right? Less than or equal to negative 1. Everybody see that? So this, this isn't really part of it. I'm just showing. This is the part that goes on the graph. Does that make sense there? Solid dot, because it's less than or equal to negative 1, all at a height, a y height of 1. That's the first piece. Let's do the middle piece. Well, let's do the right. Let's jump to the right piece. That'll be the... Let's do him first. Negative 2 is your height for x values greater than 1. Can you put that on the graph? Height of negative 2 for x value is greater than 1. Open dot or solid dot? Open. Greater, not greater or equal. It's not right on the money. It's just close to it. It's been drilled out, right? So that would be right like this, wouldn't it? Everybody see that? Because it's a, it's a height of negative 2 for x values 1 or greater. Right? Everybody see that? Right? That's the right. We've got the left piece right, but now we've got to do the hard part, the middle piece. But is that good so far? We've got the left piece and the right piece. See why it's an open dot there? Because it's only for values greater than 1, not equal to 1. So it's not right on that spot. It's just close to it. It's right. Greater to the right. It's all at a height of negative 2. Okay, now for the middle section. For the middle. So uh, we're going to come in and say, okay, minus 2x minus 1 for values of x between negative 1 and positive 1. Right, right in the middle. So how do we do that? Well, minus, I would just plug in. I'd probably just make a little table. And I would just say, okay, we're going to start at negative 1. I'm just going to plug in negative 1 and see what I get. Oh, I need a little more room. So I'm just going to make a little xy table here, plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. Because this is negative 1, 0, and 1. It just goes, in fact, you don't even need the middle probably. Anyway, whatever. Here we go. So y will be negative 2 times negative 1 minus 1. See what I did there? I just plugged negative 1 in right there. And that's what? Positive 2 minus 1. That's positive 1. So at back 1, it's up 1 which means it's right there. Do you see that? Back one, up one. That's the point. Back one, up one. Back one, up one. Do you see how I found that point? That's the point that I plugged in negative 1 for x. Negative 1 is negative, positive 2 minus 1 is 1. So back one, up one. That's the left dot in the middle section. That's the left dot. Now plug in 0. Minus 2 times 0, right? Plug in the 0 in there. What's that equal? That's 0 minus negative 1, huh? So that's over 0, down 1. That's right here. Right? That spot is over 0, down 1. That's this, huh? Say these are connecting. Do you see this? And finally, plug in 1. Minus 2 times 1 minus 1, which is minus 2 minus 1, which is minus 3. Over 1, down 3. Did that come out right? Yeah. Right. So that's, that's um, here. And, um, yeah, that's all the way down to here. There it is. That's the point. Over 1, down 3, this point. Huh. So there's our graph. You see what happened there? So I did the three dots that came from the middle part of the function, y equals minus 2x minus 1. I just plugged in the three x values, negative 1, 0, and 1, over which he covers. Plugged it in, got the y values, and put the three dots on there. Connected them up, and there it is. Now, careful, this is a solid dot. Why? Why is that a solid dot? Equal to 1. Right? This point here, equal. Whereas, and then this, now what about this open dot here? That open dot is filled in by the orange solid dot, so it all said that is a solid dot. So what about the second one? Solid. 
Yeah. Yeah, because anything in between, we cover. So the only things that are open is if they get to an endpoint and it's not equal. So it's, it's going to be all solid dots everywhere except for the red open dot. It'll be the only ones. When you graph that, you have to graph that red open dot. Well, it's not red, but, you know, everything else.